Okay, I've got my tablet. I've got my setup. I'm looking at my reference sketch. And I'm changing my color. I changed to kind of a deeper red. And I'm going to correct some of the things I see wrong in my sketch. Look at the angle of that ear. I'm going to correct that. That's more straight up. This is why I do it at a 70% opacity so I can kind of sketch and find my way. These ears come down into the head. This one maybe comes out a little bit more. Scribble technique. I want to make the eyes rounder. Get that nose placement. And I use a pressure sensitive brush so when I need to go thicker, I just press harder. I shift that leg over, give a little bit more space for the chest. These paws are really cute. I think I want to keep that. Nice thing about having a backyard fox is that you never get a great look at them. So you can kind of imagine a lot of what they look like. And then why do I have the reference open in Photoshop? It's so I can steal colors from it if I need to. Not only is it easy to look at with this, but I can just hold down Option while I'm still using the brush tool, click on another Photoshop, and I can just steal colors. You know, so we'll get there. So this is my sketch. Okay, now if I want to erase, what do I do? Well, I can use the eraser or I can just hit option and click on white and then paint, paint stuff out with white. We're not going to be erasing all that much. We're just going to keep building more content. That's why we pretty much just stay on the brush tool. But we are going to learn how to customize the brush tool more and more. And we'll keep holding down option to steal colors. Okay, so that's my sketch layer right there. Notice by using, be allowing yourself to use kind of lower opacity and different um, ah, <laughs> different widths with pressure sensitivity, how this already looks a little like a traditional drawing or painting, right? It looks kind of like Conte crayon and charcoal, a little thin. And it wouldn't take much if I just put it on, kind of dissolve, and then took its opacity down, it starts to look like a more analog artwork. And this is just with a standard brush. So now I'm going to take the whole opacity of my sketch down a little bit, just a whole layer, and I'm going to lock it. I do that with the padlock. The next stage that I'm going to do is just kind of flat colors. And then I'll start refining, right? So I'm going to do a rough painting. So I'm going to call this new layer on top of my sketch. It can be called rough painting or it can be called base painting. We're just like a flat color, basically. We're just going to fill in sort of base colors, get rid of the whites. And I'm actually going to open up more references. So I'm going to open up this one, which is my actual fox. I'm going to open that up with Photoshop. I'm still going to refer to this one, but I'm going to move it over. right? So I can toggle between these if I want to. Then I'm also going to bring over this one Open in Photoshop. Come on. Because these are some of the colors I want to fill in with. So I've got three here, and I've got my, my standard here. If I click on mine, I can hit Command-O, fill it in the screen. Now if I go to Window and Arrange, and instead of two up vertical, I'm going to do three up stacked. 
And with three up stacked, I can arrange it. I don't know if four up stacked where I can have three on the side here, but I can toggle. Like I don't actually need this one right now. What I need is this one. So I'm going to shrink that to fit. And then I don't need to see this one fully. I just need to be able to steal colors. All right, now I go back to my original. And now that I have multiple layers here, I'm going to start the base painting. I'm going to save it. So I need to save it as, this is my, always put my name in there, my um, assignment seven, digital painting. Backyard Fox. All right. So it's saving to my cloud right now. All right. And I think that's perfectly fine while I'm working in the class. And then when I want to save it between steps, I'm going to save it to my desktop. So I, I might as well do that too. Save as onto my computer. Yeah, just onto the desktop as a Photoshop file. So as soon as you have layers, do that. You don't want to lose your work. Okay, now for my base painting layer, let's customize a brush. So instead of just using this standard brush, which looks like that, and this is a hard round pressure size brush, it's under general brushes, I'm not going to search for a great brush. The defaults built into Photoshop, they're fine, but we want to learn how to create one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say File New, and I'm going to make a new file that is Let's do 1,000, this is usually what I do for brushes, by 1,000 pixels. Doesn't matter the resolution because you're saying pixels. Doesn't matter portrait or landscape because it's going to be a square. Here it is. I'm going to switch to defaults, which are black and white. And now with my pressure sensitive brush, the one I've been using, at 70% opacity, size 62, hardness 70, I'm just going to start working with diagonals, doing kind of a splatter abstract expressionist painting. What I want is this, uh, these are the individual bristles of my brush. This is how I like to design brushes for digital painting, especially if I'm doing fur texture. I want a lot of open space at the edges. So little splatters, little flicks. Imagine how long this would take to do with just a mouse without the pressure sensitivity of a tablet. So that's why tablets really are essential for digital painting. If I build it up too much, I can always switch to white. And kind of cut into it, splatter across it. I'm spitting paint here. Okay, go back to black, maybe fill in a little bit more, maybe go cross, a little cross hatching, just a little. But notice no horizontals or verticals, because angle is really important when you're using these brushes. And maybe back to white, cut across that, just a slightly different angle. Whew, crazy brush, you can sell this for a million dollars. All of you will download it. ABR files. Or I could be like an old school professor and say, you're required to buy my brush set or your digital paintings will be unsuccessful. No, it's very easy to make a brush. So once you've done that, you fit it into a square, careful of where it crops off. You see where, where I got sloppy with my painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my eraser at 100% opacity and clean up those edges. Otherwise you're gonna have some crop marks in your brush, and you might not want that. But as long as it's free floating in the middle here, then you simply go to edit, and then there's a 
an option for de define brush preset. You can also do this with a pattern. I don't recommend that. But this is the brush. I'm going to name it after myself and the semester. I recommend you do the same if you want to find it later. And because I made it 1,000 pixels, its default shape is going to be how many pixels it is wide, which is 973. Okay, now I've got that brush. What does that mean? It defaulted to the full size of that brush, which means if I select all and delete and fill it with white, I can make... Why oh, did that happen? That was weird. Oh, because it was on color. All right. Let's see. White. Good. Now I can just click once. Oh, should be able to click once. Oh, I'm on the eraser. I have to be on the brush tool. And scroll down and you'll find your brush at the bottom, right? And then if I just click once, I get my brush. But right now, with my brush settings, it's 70% opacity. Now, you've just done all this work to create a brush. You can affect the size of it. Notice you can't affect the hardness because our brush was already made with different hardnesses, right? But this is where the real tools in Photoshop are for brushes. They aren't here, though these are helpful. They are under the brush settings. So if you go to Window, the shortcut for it is here, Brush Settings. But if you don't see it, you can go to Window and click not on Brushes, but Brush Settings, right? Brushes are the default shape. Brush Settings are all the things that matter for how it operates. So Brush Settings, that's my brush with no settings, except it has smoothing turned on, which I've never actually seen make all that much of a difference. All right. The first thing I want you to do is shape dynamics, incredibly important. So click on shape dynamics, then open it up. You want your size of your brush not to always be identical. You want it to jitter. Then most importantly, you want the control of it to be based on your pen pressure. So now, ooh, I've got a really nice kind of charcoal brush right now, but it can get better because notice how kind of even it looks. It looks like some of those brushes already built into Photoshop. So to make it more like a traditional brush, I'm going to play with the angle jitter. So it's not always locked in the same angle. Ooh. And now it's starting to have a lot more variety to it. Then I'm going to play with the roundness jitter, which means sometimes it will be smoother, tighter. Sometimes it will be sharper. So this will give us a lot of the, the same variety we would have in an, a real brush. Moving pigment on. The reason it looks fairly dry is because I had so much opening in mind, which is good for fur less like an airbrush, but I could always smooth it and soften it. You can play with the, don't mess with these controls just because our tablets are basic. We just want to worry about pin pressure. We can play with something called wet edges, which is how it blends, but I, I wouldn't use it for this first step. And we could even make it so it mixes between two colors between foreground and background. So right now I have black and white, so that's not that interesting. But if I mix two different colors, it would mix those within the brush. There's just all kinds of things you can do here. Texture is pretty great. Let's put a little bit of texture in. And we're going to choose a texture. I like the water. And you can see it there. So it's going to give a little paper grain already to the brush as I use it, instead of having to overlay that later but I'm going to play with a jitter to the depth. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking this brush. So this is good for filling up white. Okay. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. If I make it really big, remember, this is what my brush actually looks like. But now when I put it down, 
it's going to change its angle each time. 